I don't remember what episode I said this in. But I'm going to expand upon this statement because I'm going to be honest with you. This really hit me. Um, I kind of got into feeling that um, of the two, I think I actually preferred Loki over Thor. And I kind of whole honestly think I've gotten more out of this TV show than I've gotten out of every movie Thor's been in. Honestly, same. And this is a bold statement here. Short? This is up there. For, and I'm counting Loki as one of the originals because he was the original Avengers villain. He is like tied for perfect endings to his character for me with Captain America and Iron Man in this. Yeah. It's kind of insane how well this ended. I know the creators said there's not going to be a Loki season three. Nor do I want one after how this ended. I would actually be physically upset if we see Loki again. Um, that being said, I think he just became one of the most important, not even characters anymore, but staples in the Marvel tapestry. He is. He's the new Kang. Like, I doubt anything short of the last Avengers movie of the next phase. We're never going to see Loki again. Nope, because he's he he now has his glorious purpose. And the one throne he he didn't know he wanted. I don't know. Again. I'm a lot of the, th uh, one of my things with Moorhead and the other guy directing this, they did a good job. I believe that all directors can do a good job, but you also have to have a very good script in order to do a good job. A director can be handed a pile of dog shit, no matter how good they do. It is still inherently a pile of dog shit. <laughs> it, it, it may smell nice. It may, like, they, they may be able to elevate the material, but the material is still the material. Whoever wrote this season should write the secret, the, um, of, uh, uh, shoot. What is the other, a uh, King dynasty movie? Um, so that is Eric Martin. He has written, he's written pretty much every episode, um, by himself and a couple other co-writers for episodes three and four. Of this season. He should do more. Hey Marvel. I know we've kind of gotten on the. Train of you know. Finally agreeing to treat people like human beings. Lock this guy down and pay him. He is your golden ticket. He he, re he really is. E Eric, Eric Martin did. Such an incredible job. With. I would I would say every episode, even even like the second episode, which some people um, were not as high on, I still think was a lot of fun. Oh, it is. I don't know if this is my favorite one because I've had moments that I've gotten more reactions, different things out of. But I will tell you, this is the best Marvel season that they've come up with, and that includes Netflix. Yeah, I, I I was gonna say I would probably I would probably put Loki season two up there with like Daredevil season three. Oh, it, it it's it's be I, I I will stake that claim that it's the best thing outside of a movie that Marvel's put out, and it's better than most movies Marvel's put out. If I'm being perfectly honest, that includes back when people liked them. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's perfectly fair to say. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so okay. <laughs> 
yeah, this writer is good at at humor. He's good at drama. He's good at everything. And Tom Hiddleston better win something for this. I don't know what, but he better win something. He he really he really is like putting his all into into this episode alone because what he's what he's basically asked to do is you know every time travel story has to do their version of groundhog day this this is just this is the more chaotic version of that centuries they had a time stamp that said centuries later that is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How long will that take, Ouroboros? Centuries. Cut. Centuries <laughs> later. <laughs> Go to the... Yes, by the way, don't drop it. It's going to roll off the gangway. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the Groundhog Day in the start was fantastic. I'm like, this is exactly what I wanted. Because it's going to get serious later. The humor was there, but I loved how even in the dickery that happened, it still didn't work. And He Who Remains just planned for this not to happen. I can't even begin to put into words. We had that character for so little of time. And I instantly remember that that's the best version of the variant. The second we got to have him back. Yep. He is the best prick that Marvel has. He, oh God, he is just, he, he's the best, but he's also the worst. But that's what makes him the best. Because he's just like, did, did you really think I was just going to sit in the chair and let her kill me? That is such a good point, though. When you sit back on that, this dude that can send people through time was just okay with being stabbed? Because he, he, knew, he knew the outcome. He knew it was coming. <laughs> it made so much sense. Guess what? You're going to come back here eventually. It's all going to go wrong. And I made it so that it would all go wrong. I am the person that put the failsafe in just to be stupid. How's t- 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 timely doing? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's fantastic! And the best part about all this is, he knows his variants got out, and he's okay with it. So it still allows. I was like partially terrified that they're like, oh, this is gonna somehow cancel. But they said they didn't reshoot anything, so I was like, this couldn't have whatever. I'm like, oh god, good, because there's that stupid asinine rumor that they want to replace. Kang with Doctor Doom. Don't let Kang finish and then let Doctor Doom have his own thing because he can have his own thing and you can fucking recast Kang if you want to. I hope, exactly. Jonathan, I hope Jonathan Majors gets cleared and he's a wonderful human being because my God, whether he's an absolute abhorrent asshole or a wonderful person, oh, he's a really good actor. He is. <laughs> If he turns out to be true and he did everything he did, recast him, Denzel Washington's right there. And it got even more proven when we were sitting in that chair because that was borderline a calm version of what Denzel Washington does at the end of training day. It was literally just that. And it was the best shit ever. Put Denzel Washington in some blue and or in some purple and green and fix the problem. <laughs> but you know, anyway, <laughs> I, I'll be honest. I didn't really, I didn't really see it before, but. I see it now. It's the He Who Remains variant. It, that's the one that always does it for me. He has that just Denzel, like, just suave cockiness to where he's just like, I'm the coolest guy in the room, and you can't deny that. And you get to let him be an omni omnipresent prick that's just like, I'm just going to sit here in a chair, dude. You can't do anything. I get, like, there's few people that are just as good as talking as Denzel Washington. And when you talk, he feels powerful. Has anyone seen Man on Fire, the Equalizer trilogy, or Training Day? The man knows how to talk. <laughs> yep. And that would be the perfect role for him. He's going to be in like three movies, get paid an ass load, and get to do whatever he wants and not have to be in the whole thing. And because he's Kang, he doesn't got to fight. And when he does, you can have stunt doubles. 
He doesn't have to look like a jacked monster. We already had that thing in Ant-Man, which I love that they fucking referenced it at the end of this. Yes. <laughs> but, uh... Oh, uh, but anyway, we're skipping over some shit. I really like this episode. Oh, yeah, no, this is yeah. this, ep this episode was really good. Uh, oh, just having big pulled print. I really missed he who remains. There's few characters in any source or medium where we've only had them for like five minutes, and I'm like, I need more. Yep. Oh, uh, and the repeated like you have to, he's like guess what you didn't think i was all we we're gonna have here <laughs> and the little loki how many times do you think we have had this conversation you're my favorite i don't know if i've told you but you are my favorite <laughs> and it's either you kill her or you start this multiversal war that everyone dies in so are you gonna kill her and i'm just like I don't know if I'm going to handle that. And I don't think Loki's going to do that because. Yeah, no, I, of, of course he wouldn't do it. Because we all talked about this in the last episode. Or the last episode review, how this is going to lead to Loki sacrificing himself. And yep. I'm pretty sure I talked about him borderline having, I don't remember because I don't remember the review off the top of my head, of something going wrong. And him having to go out and fix the fucking thing himself. And that would just be the end. But, uh, so, Loki walking out and having the most old school, like, old, old version of Loki. Like, Norse mythology style, like, robes and actual antlers Loki. Yep. Or horns Loki is awesome. It's one of those looks where they're like, we could never do that. They're like, we're going to have it for two seconds. It's going to be simple. And it's going to look great. And it did. It looked so good. That looked like a Norse trickster-like forest god. That looked like how Loki should look. This, this is where, where, and I can't, I can't take credit for this. This is something that Koi Jandro pointed out. This is where Loki becomes... The God of Stories. Yeah, I was going to bring it up if you didn't. Because I had that pulled up because I listened to um, Top Ten Nerd quite a bit. They brought that up about how, and I don't know anything about the freaking story. But, uh, shoot, where was it? It was, he basically breaks the fourth wall and talks to one above the shadows or something. And then rewrites everything for himself to do stuff sitting outside of time. So that's basically what this is. I know next to nothing about Loki, but I get snippets from these top 10 lists. And it's great. It, that's a great thing for Loki to have. Because again, he always wanted a throne and he didn't get it. And then peeling away the business suit to let a not brandishing gold and looking all royal like persona that old Loki wanted to put up it, it's, now, it's, it's a more it's a more rustic look it, of like the a, classic the classic Loki horns and everything. Well, it's also looks like a god that doesn't feel like he's above the people that he rules. Loki, when he was on Earth and had himself all clad in leather and gold, looked like a guy who thought he was more important than everyone. This guy looks like he wanted to look like a commoner and he wasn't important. He he was. He was doing, he was doing this for the right reasons, which yes, I think has been the entire point of of this series in general. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and like she pointed it out, like Sylvie pointed it out point blank, and uh, right before when they had that talk in that bar, you're trying to save all this because you don't want to be lonely, and you want to save all your friends. But then to save all of his friends, he has to be eternally lonely. That's that is that is the burden. And speaking speaking of, of which, yeah, going going back to the interrogation scene from from I think that was the first episode. Episode one. <laughs> that's that's what makes it such a great finale because it ties everything back to even even the previously on 
segment, like the recap brought up scenes from the Avengers. Mm-hmm. It did. Like, they, 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 they really pulled out all the stops for, and, for this. Yeah. Everyone got to be like, Owen Wilson never gets to be a serious actor anymore. I, I'm, I'm not saying he was also ever a thespian or ever had that series of roles, but like you forget that he can actually genuinely act when him and Loki are just talking to each other. Mm-hmm. He's, and Loki goes to him, how do you deal with all of it? And he says, scar tissue. Like, that is an unbelievably well-written exchange. And then he, Mobius has no idea what's going on. All Loki does is shake his hand and everyone disappears. And it all fades out. And he gets to the last point. And we said it before. And now I remember why I brought it up. Loki has an unbelievable power set now. He can stop time. He can live outside of time. That is why he would never be allowed back into time because they would no longer have problems. Anyone who has watched JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, as soon as Jotaro got the power of the world, um, Araki learned very well that almost in every season he had to either cripple him or damn near kill him because if Jotaro was in a scene, the problem got solved. (laughs) He could made too powerful of a character and he realized it. That's why after seven, you don't have Jotaro anymore. But, uh, <laughs> and the best part about it is like Asgard's gone. And we never got to physically see this in any of the Thor movies, but you physically see Loki dragging all the strands and he makes Yggdrasil, the world tree, out of timelines. After he himself just went, fuck you to the loom. <laughs> yep. That, that was just awesome to experience. Oh, that was fantastic. I just like, he just got rid of it so it didn't explode. Wow. But, uh, but yeah, so then that goes. And you had a borderline Star Trek reference where he just <laughs> and they're banging on the glass and uh, you get that going through. He's like the God I need to be. And as he's walking out, we get all this and it gets by back to a regular, whatever. You sure. She's not going to kill us. <laughs> so well, everything's back to normal and the TVA is just there, but now they actually know who's taking care of them. It's an honest TVA. Without the one person we will get to. But we referenced it. It just, any time we get to hear those three words, I turn into a giddy little nerd for no reason, because I just know that means, ah, it's us! When they're talking, here's what you wanted on the on the um, He Remains variants. Have we gotten any word on them? Or And also, that none of them know that the TVA exists. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of nuts. That makes it sound like we might not see Loki again, but we might hear from the TVA again. <laughs> But you know what? what, what that means? Hold on. Wasn't there a rumor that the TVA was somehow involved in, in Deadpool? In Deadpool. <laughs> in Deadpool, because they were going through taking care of variants. If they're going to show up in any movie and never be referenced again, th- that would be the perfect one. Yep. Because in all honesty, this whole thing just needs to stay away because now it's just in the background. And all they're doing is staying back and maintaining. We do not need to see the TVA again. Outside of Deadpool, which is a comedy, that would be perfect. Because they could just be like, this is too screwed up. This is one one timeline we actually need to prune. You're just going into the 616. Because <laughs> you've done fucked up too much. Because after Sean Levy openly admitted that it was unbelievably easy to get cameos, I am ready for that thing to be fucking bonkers because everyone that has ever existed in a Sony or Fox Marvel film has been rumored to be in that fucking movie. (laughs) And Sean Levy just went, here's a whole lot of gasoline to that fucking fire. (laughs) (laughs) But, uh, but yeah, we get the, here's the file you requested. How about anything on the variants of the, he who, uh, the, he who remains variants. No, not that anything they don't know that we even existed. We had a little ruckus of one in the 616, but they, I guess they took care of that. <laughs> I, 
I, I, I love, I love when like, when other other events in the in well in any shared universe are just kind of casually thrown like thrown in dialogue like that. Yeah, not like the, not like it's forced referencing a name which everyone thinks they do all the time that is a conversation two co-workers dealing with variants would have exactly but yeah and now like i love how everyone is back at the tva including miss minutes but yet still fuck you to ren slayer <laughs> 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 no matter what she was still went nope you're getting pruned and you're staying there <laughs> the best part is i have no idea where she landed but i do not care to be honest she she's wherever do you remember where it is when they go when they go pruned because you remember the sky monster they had to deal with he shows up that's oh. what that thunder and crackling is oh yeah that's right the purple sky she's got pruned and is there that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, she's she's gone. <laughs> she she's in the the whatever. I forgot where that whatever is because they couldn't get back unless you opened a uh, time door. And guess what? They're not doing for her. Yep. You stay over there. You're the one person we didn't need to deal with. Everyone else gets to live. So that means she's the literal only person there other than the sky monster because they're no longer pruning variants. They're just letting them go and dealing yep. with them. So Renslayer got what came to her. <laughs> she shows up in this entire season for a grand total of three minutes. <laughs> and she gets exactly what's coming to her. Also, now the TVA handbook is only written by Obi. It has nothing to do with Timely because he looks to the back door and the book never shows up. Oh, yeah. So that is literally that freaking stupid little time continuum loop is just gone. So now the TVA is only made by the TVA. Every everything is right with the universe now. It is. And yeah, I did. And you finally get to see Mobius see his family. And yeah, he's just you know, just let time pass for a little bit. Everything ended great. I that the last like five to ten minutes, I I was actually kind of tearing up a bit. Mm -hmm. I I did not think for the life of me when we saw Loki at first. I'm like, okay, this guy's meant to be a dick, and he is meant to get what's coming to him. And then I'm like, they're making a Loki TV show. What? And then I'm like, okay. Then there's that. And then also I'm like, oh, we're getting a season two. And then we're getting halfway through this episode. And I'm like, I don't know how we got here naturally, but we did. He was just a person that wanted to be loved and thought getting a throne would get him everything he wanted. This is the perfect example of, like, they, they, they say, like, most story arcs begin with, what a character wants and ends with what a character needs. And this is exactly that. It is. It really is. And then you just see him at the end of time, just not even in a room. He's just floating in space in a chair, giving energy to the timelines infinitely. <laughs> like literally Unless we get some unearthly cosmic level freaking Lord Genome walking down the middle of space at God. <laughs> I don't ever need to see Loki again. At worst, he might show up in Secret Wars for... Some... I would imagine he would show up in King Dynasty. Yeah. We will we will see him. We we will see something of him, but I don't think he's going to be in the spotlight again the way he was here. No, if we see him again, I honestly think once King is dealt with, however he's dealt with, and we're done with multiverse stuff, 
it's literally going to be maybe Loki in an end credit scene fixing something and then just waving goodbye and letting everything keep going. Or like he's seen for two seconds correcting something and no one notices. It's going to be a really behind the scenes thing. Kind of like Thanos at the end of the first Avengers, but in a good way. Yes. Because like something's going to go, I have a feeling like something will go bad. And then all of a sudden it's, and you see some green effect and no one knows what actually happened. But then it's just Loki not doing the stupid evil guy grin, but like genuinely smiling. That stuff got fixed. I don't know. We'll see, but if it's anything other than like a two second ordeal, there's very few characters. I don't want to see them again because I like them. That is a very hard thing to get into. Yeah. Like the other, if, if we're talking about 2023 endings, I think the only other one that's like even comes close to Loki season two is John Wick chapter four, where I love that movie, but I never need to see Wick's story continue. I know he'll, he'll like make a cameo in the ballerina spinoff, but yeah. that doesn't count. Yeah. Unless and Keanu and unless Keanu Reeves wants to do this, wants for a Halloween special, you do Keanu Reeves fights his way through hell. I would see the shit out of that as a holiday special for Halloween. Yeah, same. <laughs> hell, maybe maybe that's the plot of the uh, the the upcoming John Wick anime. That'd be sick as shit. And I, I don't remember who put this out. Hold on. I can't take credit for this. But ever since um uh duh, 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 since uh edge runners happened, um oh okay, who is this? This is at my underscore chappy was like, please be studio trigger, and yes. Yes. Give the Edge Runners treatment to John Wick. Stylized yes. as hell. It doesn't need to look realistic. Have you seen um J John Wick? I want to say it's Hex or something. It's a video game that's super stylized and super colorish. So that, but in the style of um like in in the style of Edge Runners. Yeah, make it like don't make it super. I don't need some animated thing that looks as real as, like, Scanner Darkly. I don't want that. Not at all. I want something that looks like a bloodbath that is just unreal. I need something that you can make it look like he's doing his ridiculous things and it looks stylish as fuck. And one thing I've learned about Trigger, I love them because everything they make has to end up in fucking space somehow. But when they get a leash put on... And they have to do something that's normal. They somehow expend that energy otherwise. And make the most stylized, awesome, cool shit ever. The action in in Edge Runners. So like the way they do the um like the actor images. Yeah, the sand devastan. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's a ridiculously talented studio that has proved on top of making their own stuff, they can handle other IPs as well. It's almost like they're a really good studio. I'm not saying the guy who directed my favorite anime of all time is like head of it and he's awesome, but he is. <laughs> anyway, back to back to Loki. <laughs> back to Loki. Yeah, um, this is the how do I want to say this? Outside of Spider-Man. No Way Home. Because that is just a movie that you can never make again. This is the best thing that Marvel has made post-Endgame. End, post 
And that is not because I think everything else is bad. I'm not one of those stupid people that went, it should have ended with them game. They don't do the comic book characters that I want. We don't get to meet a six six anymore. <sighs> You're all a bunch of whiners. Just because everything doesn't go your way. And oh my God, there's a lesbian in one of them. <laughs> Shut up. Anyway, th this is the best thing they've made. And in my opinion, this is the best thing they've made that's not a movie. Yeah. I will I will say I, I will say pretty definitively that this is this is the best TV show that they've made. Um it out of only the Disney Plus shows, it's easily the best. Out of everything, I'll say it's at least tied with Daredevil season three. Yeah, it's... And out of the entirety of the MCU post endgame. Yeah, it's the, it's it's the best. Pre Endgame, this might be in my top ten. Like Endgame chunk in, this might be in my top ten of favorite things they've done. And I really hope that um, you know it's it's fine if um, Benson and Moorhead just want to do the TV shows because that's for for directors, um, like for for television the you know the people in charge are usually the showrunners and the writers it's it it's movies where the, the directors are the king of the hill mm -hmm. so with that in mind if they want to just do television i'm fine with you know whatever they're doing with daredevil and that being the end of it but if i were kevin feige i would i i would uh gas them up for secret wars and the writer and yeah, and have have them work with Eric Martin. They need to keep Eric Martin on almost anything. This was tight knit as shit. Other than the stupid time paradox you did not need to make, but this is a time travel movie, so that shit always happens. It's yeah, inevitable. It, it comes with the territory. Literally 99.9% .9 of these writing decisions I loved. <laughs> No, yeah, this is the, the quality on this is insane. And it saddens me that we had to waste a Thor movie of the Dark World with Loki barely being in it. And we didn't get, like, we no longer get Loki anymore. And I already miss him. Same. Like, he is below, at this current moment, of the original six. It's Captain America, RDJ, or well, the original seven, I'm going to call them, because... he's Yeah, he's, he's very, very much part of that. He's very much part of that. It is Captain America, Iron Man, and Loki now. Yeah. Hard, hard to disagree, because Lo Loki has always been... He's always been the best. He's been the best villain. He's been the best anti-hero. Now he's just straight up the best hero. Or just the it's, best character. It's insane. And again, Tom Hiddleston needs to win something for this. And then he needs to get whatever movie role he wants. He can, he can do anything. You he's know what I want. He's probably too old to be... Um, to be 007. I, you just literally read my fucking mind and I don't care. How old is he? I'm looking it up now. Keep talking. Cause how old was like freaking, um, if you're going to sit here and tell me, uh, da, 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 he's, 40, he's 42. Old was Daniel Craig. I think he was 30, either, either 35 or 38. He was 38. Oh, if, wow. we can, if we can have Daniel Craig be 38 in Casino Royale, we can have Tom Hiddleston at 42 be James Bond. Buzz that boy's hair down and give him the title. That is him right there. I, I Him or Henry Cavill, at this point, every other choice is wrong because y'all won't let Idris Elba do it. Yeah. 
because if it wasn't, it should be him. Here's here's another role, but he might be too he might be too big of a name to do it now. Imagine imagine if Hiddleston was like the next Doctor in Doctor Who. Yeah, unfortunately, he's a little way too big for that. But I can see him being the kind of guy that would be okay with taking a slight pay cut to do it if they if he really wanted to. Hiddleston is one of the people that I look at and feel like he's a person that does acting because he legitimately enjoys acting. The huge paychecks are a giant plus, but he genuinely loves acting. And hey, James Gunn, I don't know what, but if you're ever going to touch Sandman again... Oh... Okay, I see. I see where you're going with this. Your boy's no longer tied down to Marvel. I see the vision. I mean, he could be anything in DC, but man, that's tasty. It's really, really tasty. Or if you're going to throw him in a role for something in the Justice Society, I don't know what, but. He can do anything, but I would love to see him on the other side of the fence. Cause what if he's the question? Or is he or is he not rugged enough? He could be the question, but in my brain right now, I just saw him in two face makeup and I was very okay with that result. Oh. All right. Cause if you actually let him be Harvey Dent for a while. I see it. That could be really good. I see it. Yeah, that would be... That would be amazing. Or, if we're going to let Hugo Strange have hair... (laughs) It's the smile, isn't it? It is the smile. And then the other obvious one, if I'm going to go down the Batman route... Scarecrow... Oh. Scarecrow is right there. Yeah. You want to have someone be a snide prick talking to the inmates at Arkham and let him be Crane for a while? But again, the the possibilities possibilities are endless. endless. Yes. You could let him be whatever he wants. He's in, he is, he's got, he, it should be illegal to be as good at acting as he is. And it doesn't look like he tries that hard. He's, he's just really good. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, and anything with restrictions and whatever, you could put Hiddleston in something and have someone else do the action because guess what? Robert Downey Jr. didn't do a whole lot towards the end of those Avengers movies because he sprained his ankle once and then they went, no one does their own stunts anymore all across Hollywood because they had to fucking shut Iron Man 3 down for like six months. (laughs) RDJ ruined doing your own stunts for everybody except for Tom Cruise because they aren't telling them no. (laughs) That's, That's hilarious. But, uh, yeah, uh, this is really good. It was really good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for the people that are going to complain that they've done more than they needed to, guess what? They didn't need to do this show. They did. They didn't, but we got it and it was great. And I am very satisfied. It is so that anyone says, well, they should have just all this Disney plus stuff. Guess what? If you're going to throw the baby out with the bathwater, this has to go too. You can't just say, I wish they wouldn't have done all this stuff. This is part of it. Hold it. Okay. Are you... Wait, were you the one that wanted to talk to me about um, Onimusha at the con? (laughs) One second. I know I gave my Twitch info to one person at the con, and it was the one I was supposed to talk with Onamushi about. Good to see. Oh, I... is that is that Takashi Miike's new uh, an- anime series? I don't know because I haven't gotten to watch it yet. I barely knew it existed. 
or or this might be the guy who was chainsaw man either way um yeah i met some people at a con that i went to recently again because i haven't won to one since 2019 and i had a great time but i need to make business cards because we talked to onimusha yes all right it was the guy who i talked to onimusha about excellent um i need to get on that too soon yes hey bud you're watching this message me on twitter because we're gonna get off of this really quick okay and i'm gonna start going on twitch next week which we'll talk about that in the interim but we're about to close out thank you so much for watching i greatly appreciate it i've been taking a break off of streaming and i'll be back to it next week continuously just need to i've been trying to binge attack on time because <laughs> it's finally done but all right mike where can everybody find you you guys can find me on various social media at Captain K42. You can check out my quick thoughts on letterbox.com slash Coach K42. And you can follow Renegade Pop Culture on Facebook and that place at Ren Pop Culture. You can also find us on YouTube, Podchaser. Subscribe to our Patreon at patreon.com slash Renegade Pop Culture. Listen to all of our podcasts on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen. And last but not least, everything can be found at renegadepopculture.com need escape so do we absolutely and you can find me everywhere on thanks to matthew carnes by the way <laughs> we're gonna go through the list i'm finally gonna start using it now since i'm actually gonna be getting more into cosplay and going to more cons you can find me on instagram the social media platforms formerly known as twitter blue sky again thank you matthew carnes i finally got an invite code i'm on threads never use it and or most importantly or uh, blah, 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 YouTube and Twitch at Organoid Zero. It is the same across all platforms. I have it on pretty much everything. And if I don't have it on it, I don't want to use it. So yeah, come, I'm finally going to be back to streaming. I took a break because I wanted to make sure I had everything ready for the convention that I went to in Minneapolis, which where um, kind commenter was from, got to me doing some other stuff, been doing more of that. And uh, this week, I made a rule for myself that I'm not finishing any animes unless they're done and Attack on Titan just finished. So my ass has been planning on my couch watching Attack on Titan because there's a lot to go through. So I will be back to streaming for sure. And I actually have a plan now for anyone who's interested. On Mondays, I'm going to go through Mass Effect because that freaking thing, that teaser got me into it. On Tuesdays, I'm going to do whatever a current thing is. And then on Wednesdays, I'm going to break my N64 back out. And I'm going to do an old school game on Wednesdays. Don't know what yet. I'm probably going to go back to Donkey Kong. Nice. But we'll see there as we go there. I got like 14 streams into it. And then just like rearranged my desk and never plugged the freaking 64 back in. But all right. Yeah, we will see you all next time. And yes, anyone who watched, I greatly appreciate it. But I will talk with you again on my next Twitch stream. We will see you all later. Peace. Bye.